All right, let's talk about some of the uh, top NWSL draft prospects heading into the 2023 draft. Uh, a reminder, if you want uh, a look at the live registration list, you can do that on the NWSL website. Registration closes January 9th. It's coming up on a Monday, but uh, there's a ton of register players already, uh, 178 amongst the list. There's a lot of players there um, to take a look at. But, you know, I know when that preliminary list dropped, you know, we covered that for, for CBSSports.com. You can go check it out. And, and some of the players that stood out for me immediately were players like Reina Reyes, you know, Alabama is the runners up in, in the NCAA state championship. Uh, Messiah Bright, Izzy the Aquila, uh, mm -hmm. Emily Madrill. I mean, there's, there's a ton here. I think you can actually flesh out for this draft class at minimum, if not a top 10, at least a top five uh, prospect list for this upcoming draft. But yeah, for sure. I mean, there are definitely top players within this registration list. Um, and some people saying out there, rumors circling around like, hey, this draft class isn't maybe going to be as strong as last year. I disagree. I don't think it, it has to do necessarily with um, the depth of of like the top 10, the top 15, the top 20, but how good these individual players are. I mean, you said it, Emily Madrill, the defender uh, who was formerly with Florida State University uh, two seasons ago. This is a player that um, could have been in last year's draft class, maybe, perhaps, but it is going to be in this one uh, just with kind of how everything rolls out. But there's, I, I think that the individual players right in the top five, the top six, six could be potentially more talented than some of the, the overall draft picks last year, right, in terms of um, – the skill that they bring and the qualities that they can contribute to these NWSL teams. Um, I mean, some of my top picks that I'm really excited to see, uh, Rena Reyes, defender from Alabama. It, it's We saw a defender go number one the last two years in Naomi Gurma, last year to San Diego, the year before, Emily Fox to Racing Louisville. Um, I, I just... I like this pick. I'm not sure. Number one overall, I'm still waiting for a couple more of the names to trickle in, but um, this is Reyes is a defender that anchored Alabama's back line. She was Mac Herman trophy, semifinalist sec defender of the year. Uh, she had her best season this year in the college cup with Alabama um, Mexican international. She most recently had four caps in the CONCACAF W championship with Mexico. This is a player that has the international experience. She can play at the top level with Alabama. I'm, I really like her. I really like what she did with her time at Alabama and I'm excited to see where she'll go because defenders are needed in this league defenders with experience defenders that have played against top competition that um, have played internationally that adds a whole nother level to her game. I'm, I'm smiling the whole time as you're talking about Rays because of course we're highlighting defenders here on attack for, <laughs> for players that, that we think are top prospects uh, upcoming in this draft, but, but I'm, I'm with you. 100 percent on on Reyes. I think she's a really good example of a collegiate program for some people that maybe came out of nowhere. Um, but a really good example of a collegiate program doing a really good job of, of scouting and recruiting and sort of building around certain type of in a couple of players. And Reyna Reyes was absolutely one of those players and somebody who's capable of playing higher up, up the pitch. I, yep. I hate to play the comparison game, but there are similar uh, trends that um, on last year's mock board, people were utilizing for a player like Naomi Girma, that this is somebody yeah. who has played, you know, positionally in that center, center back roles, very smart, has a high soccer IQ, uh, but has the ability with, really good you know the ability to distribute can play a little bit higher up the pitch and perhaps maybe a defensive mid role as well so I can't help but sort of think about some of the things that people were saying around uh, uh, Naomi Girma last year and maybe sort of hearing those similar things around a player like uh, Reyes uh, but Emily Madrill as well another one of these players um, with the uh, experience as, as a defender uh, coming into this 2023 draft. Um, I think maybe when you're looking at examples, I'm saying like 
Reina is an example of, of a collegiate program that maybe, you know, recruits well, scouts well, and continues to build off of core, a core group of players. Perhaps Madrill is this type of player that you're looking at going into this draft. It could say, who, what are the players coming into this draft who might be quote unquote NWSL ready, right? And what does that even mean? Yeah. But I think we're looking at a player, um, this player prospect list and, absolutely highlighting somebody like uh emily madrill because this is a player that totally. kind of made headlines a little bit last year in a good way um good headlines uh she's technically was was the first uh player to to ever sign a contract directly with the nwsl through 2025 actually because this is a player who made the decision to forego the remainder of her ncaa eligibility at florida state university and signing a contract with the league provided some room to have her draft rights distributed and not forfeit her total eligibility for this upcoming draft in 2023. And so she ended up going um, on a short loan overseas, mm -hmm. uh, playing with uh, BK Haken uh, in Sweden. So we're talking about a player who was with one of those very, very, you know, top collegiate programs in FSU, played under Market Corian, who's in NWSL now with the Washington yep. Spirit. And not only did she have that experience with FSU, but she's now got yeah. experience yeah. as as a club professional, having played overseas. So I think when you're looking at like list of prospects and you have teams on here who are maybe not just looking for a player to add depth, but a player to come in and make an impact immediately. Like who is that, you know, supposed NWSL ready type player? I think. Emily Madrill is one of these players that you're looking at. You have to look at defender Emily Madrill because of everything you just listed. She has the experience of being a top contender in the NCAA at Florida State under Mark Kerkorian. She has the professional experience. It almost puts her at a level of a second or a third year player in the NWSL because of uh, what she was able to do in Sweden, but playing center back there, um, understanding her role, getting a taste of what it's like to play overseas and against top competition internationally. Um, yeah. I mean, I think for her, one of the smartest decisions that she could have made to forego her final year of eligibility, start her professional career, uh, do what, she could do at that time to continue to play. And that was signing with the league on a, and then going on a short-term loan to Sweden to continue playing, getting game experience, um, playing against uh, women that have been competing for years professionally. Um, but as you mentioned, Mark Kerkorian, the former FSU head coach, he's now in the front office at Washington Spirit. But I, I predict Emily Madrill going as a top three top four draft pick in this NWSL draft. And as we talked about, Washington Spirit doesn't have a top pick. And uh, there is no doubt that Kirk Corian doesn't want to get Madrill uh, back under playing with him or, or playing on a team that he is overseeing in, in what he's doing now in the NWSL because it's his first time uh, being in the front office of an NWSL team. He would want a little familiarity with the, this type of player. Um, but I've Loved watching her play at FSU. I, I think she'll get drafted pretty high. I'm excited to see what Madrill does, where she goes, kind of how she contributes uh, to a back line. It's, it's interesting, this one, right? We're, we're starting off with our defenders that we've got, Rena Reyes, <laughs> Emily Madrill. we got to hit on some forwards here, Sandra, because out of Santa Clara, forward Izzy Diakia, she's former Gatorade National Player of the Year. She was tied for goals this year, number two in the NCAA uh, with 19 goals. She's got 50 career goals and 78 appearances. The stats for this player are just out of this world. Um, she's good too. Like a lot of players or a lot of fans might remember her from uh, the 2020 national title that happened in the spring uh, for Santa Clara. She scored the winning penalty kicks so that happened in, in the spring of 2021. Um, she's got an incredible shot. She's really powerful. She can throw defenders off balance with her footwork and what she's able to do. Um, player teams that are looking for strikers and looking for forwards that can score, have a nose for a goal and understanding a winning culture coming out of Santa Clara. I think it's got to be Izzy Diakia for a, a lot of people to circle in this draft. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I, I think when you're looking at, you know, even if, if you've got clubs who are, you know, going through their big boards and, and maybe they're just, you know, you know, they have 
things narrow down to, you know, who are the top forwards in this class or who are the top midfielders or the top defenders in this class. I think when you're looking at the forwards, I think you've got, you know, Izzy Diakia right up there, um, perhaps as number one on um, on the list of, of top fours. I, I mean, I would include Messiah Bright uh, out of yeah. TCU, um, you know, as one of the top forwards in this draft class, um, made some history you know, with uh, with TCU scored 49 goals in, in the entirety of her career with TCU. I think that's just one short of, of uh, Diakia, who had 50 with, with Santa Clara. So, um, you know, definitely a definitely a standout, you know, for for that program. And, you know, similar to um, Diakia, he has has experience in, um, you know, with U.S. youth teams. So I think when you when you have all of those all of those bullet points, right? Like on your resume, I think you're maybe looking at two of the the top two kind of potential um, forwards, uh, you know, for, for prospects. But I mean, there's, there's a ton. I mean, there's, there's Hawking, there's Hopkins, um, Felipe yep. um, within this as well. There's, there's a number of, of players. I think if teams are looking for forwards that they can go through and, and make a, a, a solid pick um, through, yeah. throughout their, throughout the draft. Yeah, I, I like your shout for Messiah Bright. I think kind of coupling her with Izzy Diakia is it, nice to kind of compare those two because they are similar, um, but coming from different programs, right? Santa Clara, TCU, um, but the international experience that they have playing with U.S. youth teams. I mean, you look at Messiah Bright. She got the U23 call up in 2022 for the women's national team. Um her NCAA tournament experience, five straight for TCU, two-time All-American, Big 12 tournament, most outstanding player. Like this player has a lot of accolades and it, that's something that teams also have to look at, but then take into stride. Who was around these players? What happened with them? Um, it, were they the only superstar on their team for three years or were they coupled with a lot of other players that really helped contribute to them and they still stood out among the top of the top? Um, I, I'm not sure if you even mentioned uh, Nicole Douglas. I think this is an interesting player out of Arizona State. She's a forward She's from London, and we talked about it at the top of the show. Drafts are an American thing, uh, but she was registered for this draft. She played for Chelsea growing up. Uh, she had an incredible, an incredible junior year in 2021 at Arizona State. She was the most prolific goal scorer in the country uh, in 2021 for that season. 2022, she kind of trailed off a little bit, uh, didn't maybe gain as much momentum from the, her junior year, probably as she would have liked. 14 goals in 2022, but she's incredibly physical. Um, she can play anywhere along the front line. I, I saw her play as a striker. I saw her play as a winger at Arizona State. Uh, but I, I think the inconsistency going from her junior year to her senior year is a little bit of a question mark. But again, you have to look at the team around these players. You have to look at the competition that they played up against and, and someone like Nicole Douglas um, you know it's in her right to, to be the top most prolific goal scorer in the country um, and then to still get 14 the next year perhaps the scouting reports were just a little bit tougher on Douglas heading into her senior year but this is someone that I think it'll be really interesting to see how Douglas enters the draft as as a London native um played with Chelsea growing up and, and to see that she wants to stay in the States and she wants to play in the NWSL, not go home and play in, in the super league or anywhere else she could. No, I'm with you. I think even like looking at some of the players out of university of Virginia could, could be, um, you know, players who can provide and for, for NWSL offenses, if they're, if they're looking for players to go ahead and, and get involved um, in the attack. So um I'm eager to see if, if you know, Alexis Spancher is going to be on, on this list of players. This is someone who I think was rumored last year to, to possibly declare early for the 2022 draft. Um, or, you know, now that she's officially declared for 2023, will she be high on some of those draft boards uh, coming up uh, in, in this in this particular uh, 2023 draft? But uh, we'll see. Uh, there is still uh, a ton of time left between now and Monday for uh, the NWSL registration draft deadline to close. So maybe we'll see some more names on this list. Maybe there will be some more prospects uh, who will, you know, go ahead and, and declare themselves eligible for the 2023 draft.